Thanks to the hardworking people of the queue and Chatterbox that are making all of our dreams come true. And I see Mr. Beeks, it's great to see you. Uh, we've, we've been having a, a terrific week here in Mumbai. Lots of exciting things are going on, lots of exciting things to come. What I wanna do is I wanna first walk everybody through a little bit of a presentation to show you some of the things that we've been working on. And we'll end up with a Q&A where we can get some of your questions uh, coming to us and hopefully uh, uh, give you more information and, and a greater understanding of what we're accomplishing here at QU Media. Before I start with that, I wanna introduce you to a couple of people that are key people here in the company. I'm gonna start with ad sales. Ashish Kotakar, I did say it correctly. Ooh, Ashish Kotakar. Yeah. Here we go, Ashish, Ashish Kotakar. Hey guys, super excited to be here. Thank you so much. Super excited to be a part of this venture. Looking forward to working together even more closely. Thank you so much. Okay, <laughs> next head of our sales, uh, Pankaj Rai. Where are you? Here, come up, Pankaj. Hello again from Mumbai. Once again, thanks to all of you guys for supporting us and keep doing that. We are rocking team and doing a great stuff over here. Thanks, thanks again. Okay, the head of our distribution group, Nita Takre. Please come up, Nita. She also leads, also leads our efforts on the Marathi channel. Namaste from uh, India and from Mumbai and super, super excited to be here. Super excited to have launched Q Marathi. Thank you for all the support. Keep rocking and keep supporting us. Thank you and namaste. Thanks, Nita. All right, we're, 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 taking, we're taking a big risk here. I'm introducing Sujata Samant, who's our marketing person. Once she starts, once, once Sujata <laughs> starts talking, she generally never stops, but we'll take a risk about that. Here's Sujata, introduce yourself. Thank you, thank you, Kurt. Hi, everybody, and thank you so much for your support and trust in QU Media and all of us. And we are so super excited and elated to get this opportunity to interact with you and meet you. So yes, keep uh, we all will keep rocking. And thank you for your support. Be with us this way always. Thanks. Gotcha. The the head of our programming group, Ashutosh Barve. Hello everyone, wonderful to meet you all and each person behind here, we're all extremely excited to make some big things happen. So thanks for joining the journey with us, thank you. And, and then finally, uh, from Chatterbox, Pranay and Julie could not be here, but we've got the two people leading the charge there, Karan Parani and Runali Dejia. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, it's really nice to be here. We're really honored to be here and thank you for all your support. Hey guys, I'm Karan. Uh, thanks for all your support and it's been a long ride. Um, congratulations to the Q team and thanks for all your support. Okay, there you have it. So those are the leads. Thank you guys. All right, Jace, can we throw up the presentation and we'll get started uh, with that. So this is what we talked about a year ago today. We had uh, started our process with content distribution and monetization of that content in Q2 of 2021. Most of you who follow us know that we had a steep and exciting rise in our revenue and our conversion in mont uh, and monetization of our uh, Hindi channel in particular. Also with the addition of Chatterbox and the amazing work they're doing there on the influencer marketing side, uh, we were really able to push forward in terms of building a solid business foundation from a revenue and financial point of view. Q3, we started to really build our brand. Many of you know Times of India is an investor in the queue. They've been a strong partner for us. In fact, I'll show all of you something uh, from the paper. Here, hold on to this, Jace. Uh, this is, this is the Times of India, the largest circulation paper in India. This is the cover of the Times of India on Monday. You'll see inside here more, you can see the Q logo there and more of that. 
that is indicative of the kind of brand effort and the kind of exposure that the brand is beginning to get in the market and part of what we started to build in Q3 of last year. You've heard a lot of uh, talk about social commerce and what's happening there. And I'll give you a little bit, bit more information about that in a moment. Now you're all probably wondering why I'm showing you the Disney blueprint. Uh, this is a very, very famous graphic. Many of you have probably seen this before. This was created, it looks like on the back of a napkin by Walt Disney in 1957. So this drawing is literally 65 years old. And we've been talking as a team about all of our aspirations and using this as an example of where we wanna take the company and how we wanna build the business and how we wanna expand be uh, far beyond what started as a channel into something that's much more robust across the board that's going to attract and hold young India audiences. So we've been starting to work on various ideas and talking about various ideas, which I'll get specific about in a minute here. But the other day I drew on the back of a piece of paper, my version, I don't know if you can see that, my version of the Disney blueprint. And Jace uh, informed me that it's 65 years later, there's actually a thing called a computer. So you can do a, a, a version of this that's a little bit uh, more specific and easy to get through than a, than a pencil and pen. Go ahead, Jace. And so this is our Disney blueprint. This is the foundation of everything that we're doing right now. This is what all these people behind me are part of working on and creating. This is our roadmap for where we are now as a company, where we're going as a company, and how we're expanding and interconnecting the dots. This is like a big Lego set. You can't have one Lego that sits by its side and doesn't connect to the other ones. Everything that you see on here is somehow interconnected to other pieces of what we're doing. The top part of this is really representative of what we're doing currently. And you know that the, what sits at the center of this and the driver for everything we do are the creators and digital content stars of social media. As a company, we believe that these people that are the, the stars of YouTube, the stars of, of the versions of TikTok here in, in India, of Josh and of Takatak and of Chingari, the people that are starring on Snap shows, on Instagram feeds, these are the people that speak to the Young India audience and they form the foundation of everything that we do. So if you look at this, you'll see that in the upper left corner where the Q channels are, we've obviously now got two broadcast channels, the Q Hindi, the Q Marathi, which exists today. We're looking at adding more vernacular channels. We don't know exactly what the timing of that is, but we think probably as soon as this year, it's very possible we could launch another broadcast channel. At e of equal importance and of greater importance potentially as we go forward into the future are the digital channels we're, we're launching. Q Kahanya, which is all animation all the time. Q Comedy Stan, which is Q Comedy all the time. These are digital channels delivered primarily through smart TV platforms. And we've already seen numbers that are staggering in terms of the viewership that's happening on some of these platforms. And we can talk about that a little bit more during the Q&A. The bottom line is, is that this business was never designed to be a single channel that was going to become a success. And that's what we were going to sort of rest and ride on. While that's extremely important in terms of the revenue that's driving our business today, and while it's extremely important in terms of being the foundation of the brand we're building today, it's only one segment of what we're trying to do. In the middle of this map, the QVOD section that sits above that, VOD sits on many of the platforms that we're on in a digital or broadcast format. So all of you are, I'm sure, familiar where you can go and select a show, in the, in, uh, in the VOD area of whatever provider you're using to get television and watch those individual shows. Same thing happens here. But in addition to that, that Q branded VOD content is also available on app based platforms like Snapchat. And it's a way for us to be able to get our brand out in front of audiences. It's a way for us to be able to provide more revenue opportunities for our influencer and digital content partners. And it's a way for us to continue to build that brand in the digital space. In the upper right side of this, you see Q influencer marketing. Well, Q influencer marketing, AKA Chatterbox. 
The acquisition a year ago, it's believe it or not now been a year since we acquired Chatterbox, has been phenomenally beneficial to our company. It's a company of 50 young Indians who are, are leading the way in terms of how influencer, influencers are marketing brands. And Simran and I and, and, and uh, Sundar and Krishna were just up in Delhi last week. And it was amazing how receptive the agencies were in terms of offering 360 degree advertising possibilities. Just had a big meeting here yesterday, here in Mumbai with the leads of Chatterbox, Runali and Karan, who you just met and with our ad sales team about how we're going to integrate more effectively as we go forward. On the left-hand side of the, of, the, uh, of the map, you see uh, Q Studios. This is something that we've been talking about. We haven't launched this yet, but we're exploring very, very deeply the idea of starting not only to create our own content, but to use the creators and digital stars that we have relationships with to create content for others under our brand. We think this is an exciting way to move forward, not only in terms of the revenue driver for the business, but again, also exposure as we go forward. Lower left-hand corner, you see social commerce. In many of the meetings we had with the brands and agencies, Three years ago, when Sunder and Christian and I originally went there, we talked about a 360 degree campaign where we were talking about how we could have television spots that then would have shoulder programming in the VOD area by those creators, where then we could go to the creators themselves onto their sites and they would have promotion for that brand on their own sites on YouTube or Insta or whatever it might be. And this time we added something to that. We added, there's also the ability for those brands to directly sell to the community of followers that they have, the products that you had. And we literally had a response from every single meeting that we had with brands that three years ago was, hmm, that sounds interesting to, that's bang on, that's exactly what we're doing. We've actually started a group inside the agency to do that, and we're gonna introduce them to you so you can get started. So we are right now in the process as we speak of going back with some RFPs to a number of the largest agencies and brands here in India to begin to do fully integrated uh, campaigns that ultimately lead us into the world of social commerce. <clears throat> We've been talking a lot this week about who we are and what we are as a company. And we've been coining the phrase that what we're really about as a business is what we're starting to call transactional content. Transactional content is where all of this content that's being consumed on all these platforms by young Indians and young people around the world is where this is all going, where the people that they're following, where the people that are speaking to them, where the people that are, that are setting the fashion trends for them, the things that they should be interested in are becoming direct salespeople and direct, sale condu uh, uh, direct sales conduit to their audiences. We strongly believe in that as a massive opportunity for our business on a go forward basis. And you'll be seeing a lot of effort and a lot of work on our part in terms of getting some of our key brands and key uh, uh, advertising partners to start to work with us to be able to provide these kind of 360 degree uh, opportunities. I'm gonna jump to the far right now to where you see the uh, Q Labs. Q Labs is what we're calling now our push further into being uh, technology driven as a company. We're really, we've really been a media company in many, many ways up till this point. And we've really been populated with people like myself and Sunder and others here that have all been around the broadcast industry, the media space, et cetera. What we also realize we need to do is we need to be technology driven in many ways. So we're beginning a hiring process and potentially an M&A process of getting into the technology space in a much more robust fashion. That's going to lead to what we have Q Labs that becomes the enabler of a lot of these things that we're trying to do. What are those things? Those are our own apps that will begin to roll out that will leverage all of these things that we're talking about. Those are third party apps where we might have APIs that come from our, our uh, Q Labs efforts to be able to integrate directly into the products and apps of others and get into things like social commerce and direct interaction with those users. It's also gonna take us further into the area of gaming and interactivity. We're big believers that the mobile gaming space in India is a massive growth opportunity for us. 
It's also being driven by influencers and by young Indian stars. And we know that we have the opportunity to take what we're doing on our channel side, on our influencer side, and on our relationships with these stars to drive some real positive momentum in gaming and interactive. I'm super proud of the fact that the first slide that we looked at, where we talked about what we were going to do a year ago, we actually did. Everybody here is executing. All these people that you see right here are executing on this dream. This isn't something that we're just talking about. We're backing it up with action and execution. And that's the key to it. Ultimately, at the very bottom of this, we've all heard about Web3. Well, what's Web3? You know, I was partially trying to, to translate to Sunder in the car the other day. What is Web3? How, what does that mean? What does all this stuff mean? Well, I'm not gonna go into a Web3 explanation right now. And I can tell you that I don't see us being into Web3 you know, next month or even next quarter. But the, web, the, the ethos of Web3, of a distributed content architecture, of a distributed uh, 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 opportunity for distribution, for community, for transaction, will ultimately become hugely important to us as a company. And I can assure you that there are many, many companies that are targeting the Young India audience, that are looking at the Web3 opportunities and what's happening and everything around crypto and blockchain and NFT and all these buzzwords that we've been hearing, that's happening in India too. And we expect to be right at the center of that. So this mind map is what drives us. This is what, this is what we think about all the time. This is what we strategize about. This is what informs whether we're going to look at a company on an M&A basis. This informs the kind of people we're going to hire. And this informs everything about what we do. Would that be correct, everyone? Yeah. See, they've all been hypnotized. Um, so uh, let's go to the next slide, Jace. So we thought it was really important to show everybody this page. All of those wonderful ideas, all of those theories, all of those uh, uh, thoughts about the future, about what we can do and what we can build, how do you get there? Well, it's what I was just saying. It's about a ground game and it's about execution. You know, there's a lot of cricket fans here and a lot of English football fans. I can't really speak as, as, as much about that as I can about American football, but you, you, know, you can't throw a, a, a 80 yard pass on every play. You've got to have a ground game. This is our ground game. Right now, as we speak, we literally have a truck going from small town to small town to small town in Maharashtra in India, promoting our Marathi channel. Okay, it's a little truck, it's got a couple of people, it's got a, a back that drops down into a stage, and this is the map, this is the path they're following. They are literally going into these towns, creating events, bringing people in front of them, talking about the channel, and doing that. So we have everything from the two-page spread at the front page of the Times of India, through a ground game where we've got people going from city to city, building our brand, building our presence, connecting with our audience and making them feel like they can be part of the Q experience. This is at the end of the day, what's gonna take us to the promised land. And again, this is what all these people do every day. They come in here and we're grinding and we're making sure that we're delivering on the promise of what we wanna do at the highest level. Next and final slide. This is a picture. These are pictures of what I was just talking about. It might be hard for some of you to see, but you can see that little stage that's back there is actually unfolds from the back of a small truck. And these are the groups of people in rural India, in tier two and tier three India that you hear me talk about a lot. These are the people who are coming and seeing the Q brand, seeing what we're standing for, realizing that we've got a uh, a, a channel that we've launched for them in their native tongue of Marathi, and that we're serving this community. We, we believe that there's an opportunity through what we're doing to service a lot of different communities in India. India is not one homogeneous continent that a lot of people in North America seem to, th uh, or country that a lot of people in North America seem to think. It's really a continent made up of a lot of different cultures, a lot of different people, a lot of different language groups, etc. The opportunity is massive. Don't ever forget, there are 650 million people in the country of India, 25 years of age or younger. Okay, it's a staggering number. There are almost 850 million people, 35 years of age or younger. Every one of those people are potential customers of Q 
products, shows, content, transactions, NFTs, everything you can imagine from top to bottom. And that's what we're trying to do here today. That's what all of these people come to work for, whether it's through influencer marketing or programming or ad sales or distribution or whatever it might be. And we couldn't be more proud when Sunder and I met originally now five years ago and he bought into the dream of what we thought we could build here. We walked into the office on Monday of this week and saw the people, for some of us, the first time because of COVID that are in these offices and working their butts off to make our business work and to hopefully make all of our shareholders extremely happy to be members of the Q family. So thank you all very much. Thank you all very much. And, and uh, I don't know how long I just spoke, uh, but uh, 22 minutes. okay, 22 minutes. Now we're going to turn it over to questions. I've got Sunder, here, let's go to the camera, the wide camera, Jay, so we can see what we're doing here. I'm going to turn it over to uh, myself and the other key managers, Sunder Aaron, who many of you know. Sunder is really a, the co-founder. He's the guy who I met the first time I came to India. I pitched him the overall vision of what we were doing. He said to me, Do, would you like a partner to do that? And here we are today. Thank you, Sunder. Rock on. Um, we've got Simran Hoon. Simran has now been with us just over a year. She is the CEO of Q India. She has a uh, incredible resume and history of success in the broadcast and ad sales industry in India. And we couldn't be more pleased not only to have her as our CEO, but to have a female CEO representing the women of India. So thanks for that, Simran. <laughs> On, on, on this side, we have Krishna Menon. Krishna, how, how long is it now, Krish? Four and a half painful years for Krishna. Uh, four and a half years that Krishna has been with us. He was the first official hire of somebody in India. There's a few other people here, Bupendra and a few others that have been with us. There's Bupi. A few other people that have been with us. Uh, Bhavna's back out there somewhere who've been with us as the original, we call them the OGs who have been with the company since we started this journey. Uh, and now obviously we're much bigger as you can see. We actually have 150 people inside the whole Q Media family now. We have 50 people working at Chatterbox. We have 75 people working here at the Q India Channels group. And we have another 25 people in the Q USA group. Krishna has been here and seen the rise of this from the original seven to where we are now today. He's a, an original Gupta, Gupta? Gunda. Gunda, sorry, Gunda, sorry. He's an original, he's an, he's, he's an original Gunda uh, uh, in the queue. And he's been hard at work, you know, building this with us. And then finally, coming over from the US with me is the one and only Jay Sparks. Jace is literally the first employee of QU Media. When we started this company, Jace came and the reason he got hired is because he can do anything. We still don't really know what his title is, but we know he can do anything. So he is the Swiss army knife of the, of the company and anything that we need done, Jace will do it, including setting, up, setting this up uh, today with a couple of the people here. So at any rate, I'm gonna take a seat uh, and uh, we're gonna look at the screen here and I'll talk about what the questions are and we'll pass the mic for the appropriate people to answer them. So, Gregory Cyprus, here we go. So what are, any, do we not have any questions yet from anyone? Okay, hang on everybody. You guys can sit down back there if you want or stand or whatever. We've got a, um, we've got a big party scheduled tonight, uh, which is the first official Q Media Bash with everybody in attendance. We're all excited about that. So please don't call any of us early tomorrow morning, India time. Appreciate that. Uh, are there literally no questions? You guys are stunned in stunned silence right now. Okay, so the question is any ideas to list in the Mumbai Stock Exchange? Um, yeah, we have ideas. Uh, we, we, we've spoken about that. We, we've looked into it. I wouldn't say that we've done a deep exploration uh, yet of what that might look like, but we certainly, uh, that's certainly on our radar screen. 
Um, we, we frankly, I think, want to build a little bit more heft in terms of our business, both from a, a capabilities perspective and a revenue perspective and a bottom line perspective before we do that. So uh, it's certainly on our radar screen and certainly uh, if we were to take that mind map that we showed earlier and draw it out in more detail, listing on, uh, on the India Stock Exchange would be one of those, but we certainly don't have any specific timeline or plans for that as we speak. Three, what, 360 degree advertising. I'm going to let Simran Hoon, who's our advertising expert, take that one. Hello, everyone. It's wonderful seeing you today. And thanks for all the support that you've given to the Q India group and QU Media. Uh, the question that I'm going to answer for you is, uh, what exactly is 360 degree advertising? So at the Q, we have this unique proposition that we are a digital first channel. And with the, with the company that we have, bought about a year ago, Chatterbox. We are one of those unique companies in India and probably the only one, the only broadcaster who can combine television with digital, with influencers. Today's young audience has moved on from, you know, all the old TV channels that were existing pre, you know, I would call it prehistorically. Today we can go on to an advertiser and give solutions where they get to be on television, the main broadcast channel, but they can also be available through influencers, do brand engagements with influencers who can be, you know, promoted on social media, promoted back on our market channel, our loudspeaker, the queue, and do tie ups, which are actually digital and television oriented. So we are one of the unique channels to actually unique media networks to have this particular feature. And as Kurt mentioned last week, when we were meeting the CEOs of some of the top companies, whether it's Dentsu, IPG, or the Havas Group, and very big FMCGs like Darbor and InfoEdge and IT companies, uh, they were particularly excited about the solutions that we were able to provide them. But I said, we can combine television and digital, and that's exactly what we mean by a 360 solution for the advertiser. Any ideas about TV? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take one of the other questions I'm seeing, because there's a number of questions about revenue projections, financials for the next quarter. So I should spend a minute on that for everyone. Uh, as some of you are aware, um, we made a decision to change our fiscal year end from June 30 to December 31. So we're now on a calendar year in terms of our fiscal year. Uh, to be honest, I was saying to somebody today, if I'd known how painful that process was going to be, I probably would have been less uh, aggressive in making it happen. But we've succeeded in doing that. We are in the final throes of finishing the audit because you end up having to do another stub year audit for last year's Q3 and Q4. That's why our Q4 results were released on sort of a flash unaudited basis about, I don't know, three or four weeks ago for the quarter that ended on December 31st, okay? So what's going to happen is on Monday, we will be releasing those audited results uh, there's really nothing material that's changed. There was one uh, uh, reduction that the auditors did that's minor uh, in terms of on the revenue side and a couple of other things that were tweaked, but effectively the numbers for the most part that were, re that were revealed uh, on an unaudited basis, whenever that was three or four weeks ago, are the same as what you'll see in terms of the results that will be through December 31st of last year. They've come out... Uh, a month later than they normally would because of the switch to a final um, end of year audit ending on 12-31-21. Our results for the quarter that ended at the end of March will be published at the end of April. So now we'll be into a regular uh, schedule like we would be where uh, we, will be, we will be publishing uh, just as we would normally. It's just that our new Q1, Q1 2022, the beginning of our calendar year is also Q1 2022, the beginning of our fiscal year. So we'll be reporting that at the end of April. There are a lot of moving parts in our business right now from a revenue perspective. Uh, we're extremely bullish on having a significant, if not dramatic jump in revenue over calendar 2021. We did about just over north of 13 million 
in calendar 2021, and we expect that number to go up in a significant fashion. I am not going to provide on this call guidance right now. I'm expecting to, in all likelihood, provide more information on that sometime between now and the end of May. So, um, uh, so that's roughly, and by the way, I said the end of April, I didn't mean the end of April, I meant the en end of May is when our results will come out. Sorry about that. So the end of May is when our results from this quarter will come out. The other thing that I'll say with respect to that is that we believe that we're in a very, very unique position right now to make smart investments. The first one we did, as I spoke about earlier, was Chatterbox. Our joke with Chatterbox that you've probably heard me, some of you say before, is it wasn't one plus one equals three, it was one plus one equals 11. We have a couple of other things that we're looking at right now in terms of acquisitions and other things that we're looking at making investments into as a company to grow our business and frankly really fill up the bottom half of that mind map that we were showing of where we're going as a company. That requires some investment. What we're really proud about is that our operating business units, the India business units, the US business units, all basically were operating at cash flow break even or slightly better in the last quarter. We're looking for that to be the case in this year that we're going into. The capital that we'll be spending will all be investment capital in growing the business, not running those in terms of the operational uh, things there. So I think, you know, stay tuned. I'm hoping between now and the end of, end of May, we'll be able to update investors with a, a much more detailed look than I'm giving you right now on what our outlook is for uh, the year 2022. Um, if it hasn't been discussed, it's been, well, yeah, um, share buybacks is not something that we've really spent a lot of time discussing. I know some of you will, you know, possibly recoil a little bit when I talk about a rollback. Uh, we still have on our radar screen, a listing in the U S market. It's very difficult, as many of you are aware, to get institutional support when you're you know, a 20 cent stock. We think we're massively undervalued right now in terms of our revenue projections for 2022 and what our market cap is. I don't have to explain to anybody on this call how decimated the small and, and micro cap market has been over the last six to nine months. Uh, we actually have performed a hell of a lot better than most in that regard, but we are looking at uh, ways that we can increase the value for shareholders, and it's something that obviously we speak about every day. We are out in a much more proactive selling mode right now in terms of meeting with individual investors, meeting with brokers, a stronger IR presence. And we're certainly looking at have, having more of that happen in the, in the US as well. I'm hoping also during the summer months to make a trip uh, to see our friends in uh, Denmark and our great supporters in Denmark, along with a number of our supporters in London. So we expect that to happen sometime uh, probably early summer as well. I guess, I guess these are all, okay. <clears throat> Do we need to raise capital for the projects? Um, uh, my answer to that is not necessarily in terms of what we're doing right now, but it's something that certainly, again, is on the radar screen for the future. We don't need capital right now to both make some of the deals that we're looking at happen, nor do we need capital to run the day-to-day -day operations of the businesses. So we're fine as far as that goes, and we're frankly not looking to raise capital at 20 cents a share either. So if the markets improve, I mean, none of us can obviously predict what's going to happen in the global markets. Uh, uh, who knows? But uh, assuming that we begin to get what we believe is a proper valuation for our company, uh, uh, then certainly we could look at uh, the prospects of raising more capital, but I certainly don't see that happening at, at 20 cents. Question is, can Q attract institutional investors? <clears throat> We're trying. We're really trying. Uh, it's hard as hell, frankly, when you're a penny stock and especially in the kind of market that we're in right now. So that we don't give up easily. We haven't given up on this business and we're not gonna give up on our stock price. I can tell you that. None of us are happy about it. We talk about it every day, 
but we're fighting uh, a very, very tough market right now. And we're fighting a market where a lot of the institutions have lost their thirst to get into what they would consider to be smaller cap and more speculative deals. Does that mean it won't happen? It'll absolutely happen. We all know this goes in cycles. We all know that uh, we've got to continue to prove through our revenues and through our, uh, our, our execution again on what we're doing to gain more shareholders. So the answer is, as we're talking to institutions, getting them to come on board is very important to us and a priority, but we haven't succeeded yet. Smart Oh, okay, yeah, the news today about 63 new smart TVs. I'm gonna turn that over to Krishna Menon, who is leading the charge on our smart TV business. Hello guys, namaste from India. Uh, so, you know, this has been our effort for a long time to get uh, uh, cheaper IP channels on most of the smart TVs. So uh, just to give you a little bit of background, what's happening in India. So India has about 25 million uh, smart TVs, not essentially all of them are connected you have about eight to 10 million of those smart TVs are connected to the internet. Uh, what's happened is most of the OEMs in India have now started onboarding channels which, so that they could actually create an entire library of content for their own set of consumers to drive loyalty. We've been in this journey for almost about six to eight months now. And today we are present across about 75 OEMs. This ranges right from a Samsung to a MI to a Realme to a Xiaomi, name it. Uh, so these are the kind of channels that, uh, I mean, these are the kind of OEMs that we are going live with. Currently we have Kahania and Comedistan, which is already live. We are working towards getting another set of about two or three more channels to start off with. Plus there is something very exciting that me and Jace are working on. Hopefully once we have a little bit of skeleton to it, we will uh, come, uh, we'll come back to you guys and make an announcement on that. Happy to take any more questions that you have. Talk to a little bit about monetization. Yeah, so uh, what's happened all this while is, you know, there are multiple challenges on the technology when it comes to serving ads on all these platforms. Now we are moving very actively to a different set of, uh, you know, the backend support where we are actually setting up an entire ad server, which essentially means the ads being served on all connected TVs would be different from what you see on the live feed which gives us the ability to now, uh, you know, generate more money, more, more revenue, in fact. And uh, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's very nascent stage. Like I said, with the population in India, 130 odd million, and you look at only about, you know, eight to 10 million connected TVs. So there's a huge explosion that is, uh, you know, believed to happen there. And it's very exciting time to be in this space at the moment. Also, today, we have a very interesting Go ahead, talk about that. We had a really, we, you know, we get a lot of uh, data directly from our smart TV uh, partners, the largest of which right now is Samsung TV. So we've got millions of Samsung TVs that are connected uh, and Samsung device users, including phones. And we just found out, we just got our dashboard going with them as a partner. And we just found out a very interesting statistic that in the last seven days, we had 1.4 million viewership minutes of our channel on Samsung devices and connected TVs. That's the numbers. Those are the kind of numbers that we're getting out of India. And we've just started 1.4 million viewership minutes in the last seven days, just on one partner, Samsung. That's tremendous. We're going to monetize that, right, Krishna? Uh, there's a question about Times of India. <clears throat> as, as you guys uh, just saw at the beginning, uh, the, the spread that existed on Times of India on Monday morning, uh, we've had a uh, spectacular and amazing, uh, amazingly beneficial relationship with the Times group. Uh, since uh, the man I'm looking at right now, Ken Silverman, introduced us all and helped us secure a partnership. He saw the opportunity of what we were doing and what Times of India is the largest media company uh, in India, one of the largest media companies in the world, represented as a, as a partnership and an, and an opportunity for both businesses. Uh, none of us anticipated, uh, for good reason, the drop in our share price that happened since the Times group came in. None of us anticipated the amount of time 
that the Reserve Bank of India would take during COVID when it was very, very slow for them to operate to approve that deal. So we actually have extended the time frame, uh, frankly, largely on a handshake basis of what we've done there. We're continuing to work. I mean, obviously you can see we did it. We, we, we were just in, on their paper. So um, we've extended our, our agreement to be able to have more time in terms of what extension is hap happening there. Uh, Neville Tarapuala is on our board as an observer. We have a tremendous day-to-day uh, -day relationship with the people on the ground here in India with our team here. And we have no reason to expect that that's not going to continue both on a a uh, marketing basis and a branding basis, but also on an investment basis. I see someone say we're gonna monetize Krishna by entering him into Bollywood. Wow. Um, there's, a, there's, other, there's other people here that might be competition for Krishna, not necessarily sitting in front of you. Well, maybe Jace, but um, yeah, well, we'll see about that. Um, uh, yeah, there's a person asking, could we comment on the Global India Diaspora Initiative? Um, one of the areas that we started, paths we started down a while back and then sort of backed off on, and now that we're picking up steam again with, is now that we have extremely popular channels, uh, we, we know that there's a great opportunity for us to package those up, bundle them and get them to the diaspora. As many of you are aware, we recently made an announcement with a Canadian-based company called Tuber that was started by some friends of ours at Ethnic Channels Group and Nextologies. And Tuber is sort of our first move into getting Canadian-based primarily, but also distribution for our channels outside of India. As many of you are aware, there's a major, major, uh, lar uh, there's a very, very large uh, Indian community in Canada. Uh, we absolutely are pursuing that as we speak in real time. We expect there to be more opportunities for us to distribute these channels. Again, I'll say channels, plural. Uh, now that we have, you know, in the form of Q India channel that's seen by literally over 100 million people a week uh, on television in India, we have a product that people are interested in and that we know works and is successful. So you will see more activity from us in that regard throughout uh, the remainder of this year and into 2023. Next significant revenue stream besides av ad revenue. Uh, really that's probably, well, it's two things. It's really uh, social commerce and uh, um, interactivity and, and, and gamification of what's happening uh, around our content. What I mean by that is we've done an experiment with, uh, or we're in the middle of an experiment with a company here, Mazalo, that's created a, wall a wallet where viewership is all free on the platform and you actually get Mazalo coins and then those are used to monetize, to buy other products and services. As I mentioned at the top, we're very, very bullish on the uh, prospects of, of social commerce here in India. Some of you may have heard of a company here called Misho. Uh, Misho has been around for about five years, but their trajectory has, has skyrocketed over the last 18 months. Uh, they now have a market cap in India of approximately 5 billion US dollars. And the business that they're in is providing an app that allows people to transact directly with their products with their followers. So it's a great indicator of what's happening, uh, what the opportunity is in that space. Many of you are probably familiar with what's going on with Instagram and TikTok and other platforms that are starting to create direct transaction with communities. You know, Chatterboxes, some of you may or may not be aware, currently represents directly 50 influencers. So Chatterbox not only has thousands upon thousands of influencers from nano influencers to much larger influencers that it works with, with brands uh, for its influencer marketing campaigns. It also directly now has 50 influencers that are part of what's called Chatterbox Represent. So we're beginning to create those direct relationships more uh, uh, effectively through Chatterbox and we'll expect ultimately to start to exploit those on a revenue basis through social commerce. Um, the U.S. side. Uh, the U.S. side, which is primarily, I assume you're referring to the influencer marketing group in um, 
uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, that business is booming too. Uh, maybe the next investor call we do will be from the LA office so you can see the growth of the US influencer business. Basically, as most of you are probably aware, the power of influencer marketing grew exponentially uh, during COVID. And nobody's thrilled about the fact that COVID was the driver for that business growth. But the fact of the matter is, is while people were locked in their homes, it's part of what drove TikTok. A lot of the reason YouTube's revenues were down when they reported earlier this week is because TikTok's stealing a lot of that revenue. And that's because people are becoming so accustomed. I mean, TikTok, we can all forget, nobody had, used to use vertical video where you're scrolling vertically on your phone. I remember five or six years ago when one of our employees talked about, oh, maybe we should start to do vertical video instead of what we used to all do of turning our, our phones sideways. Well, we got into the TikTok business in the United States very, very early on. The first big influencer campaign we did there was for uh, the movie uh, Trolls, for a platform that was then called Musical.ly. Musical.ly was purchased by ByteDance for over a billion dollars and everybody thought they were crazy. Well, what was Musical.ly then is now known as TikTok. So I guess they weren't so crazy. So uh, TikTok is a platform that I would make the argument that our US influencer marketing group is as skilled, talented and effective in marketing movies, video games, uh, and other uh, consumer verticals that we're getting into now. And so I'm expecting to see that business double in revenue at a minimum from calendar 2021 uh, uh, to calendar 2022. So a lot of growth will happen there as well. We've stumped the investors. Let's see, any more? If you, if you, have, a, if you have a question that hasn't been answered, feel free. Is anybody here on our team? Anybody, any of you have any questions for our investors? No, they're they're all they're all. Everybody just wants to go to the party, I guess. We've just gotten to that point. We're all exhausted. Uh, how do you see the risk reward regarding the Q business? Huh? There's no risk. What are you talking about? Um, so um, we see the uh, look. We we we. It was, it was interesting, a, an investor a while back said to me, uh, the Q was a hell of a lot riskier at three cents than it was at 30 cents. And I couldn't have agreed with them more. Um, we had a rough time getting here. Uh, those of you who followed us for years now uh, know that we were you know, right there at the edge of the cliff several times over the last two or three years. We stuck to it. Uh, we don't give up easily. I've told people we're like those dogs that get onto the rag and you swing them back and forth in the air and they don't let go. We, we, we hang on and we're believers that we will always figure it out. Uh, we know that India is, in our opinion, the most fertile marketplace in the world, including China, for young audiences and, and what youth are becoming interested in. Don't forget that, as I've mentioned before, our focus... Uh, our focus uh, from on a, on a content and marketing basis has very much been in what sort of gets referred to here as Bharat, which is really the tier two, tier three and rural part of the country. Uh, there's massive growth that's happening there. Any of you that follow Tiger Global, go take a look at how much money they've poured into India in the last 12 months to 18 months during COVID. Look at how much the commitment that Google, Google made of $20 billion to be poured into India over the next uh, 10 years of which two or 3 billion have already been deployed. These people are all coming here, whether it's Amazon, Netflix, Google, Microsoft, the smartest companies in the world uh, and the biggest investors in the world. Tiger, I believe is the world's largest uh, private equity investor right now in media and other things. These companies are all coming to India because they see the magnitude of the opportunity here. Part of the reason we wanted to do this for investors today is I wanted to make sure that you knew that it wasn't an aging but charming old white guy from Los Angeles that was making all the decisions about what was happening and growing our India business. It's all of these people back here who are now sitting down, okay? These are... 
these are these are the people that you need to thank and the people sitting on the stools right here these are the people that you need to thank for what's happening in our business uh, I can sit up here and talk about it, and I certainly do my best to make a contribution. But the fact of the matter is, is that somebody has to execute. So I wanted to show you that map of the truck going from town to town in rural India. You know, it, it, it's just, it, it's an amazing group of people. We try to provide opportunity for people here in our company to get, to learn new things, to build their careers to build their resumes, to build their ability to be part of this growing digital economy, creator economy, and ultimately web three economy. So it's super important for us to be able to bring in people who believe in the vision of what the power can be of the India marketplace. And, you know, believe me, uh, uh, Q has a long, long way to go here, and we, we, we feel that this is really, really just the beginning of, of where we're going to go in the future, and we think that the, both from a revenue perspective, from a stock price perspective, but most importantly from business perspective, which is why I showed you that big map, we have grand aspirations for building something that will be a lasting brand in the India marketplace for many years to come. Uh, one other question that I caught out of the corner of my eye earlier was people asked if we're going to go outside of India. Um, we tried that before and it didn't work very well for us. And we, we, we came back and we said, let's make it all about India, with the exception of the influencer marketing team, which is doing so well in the U.S. Uh, this business and the, the map that I showed you and the ideas that were expounding they're all about india right now india is where we're, we're we're here to stay we're here to build this you know we launched the q marathi because that's a the marathi language group is as large as the country of germany well why do we go to germany we've got it right here in india and we can go in and penetrate that with the people we have so we're looking at at, at making a major impact and being a household name in india when that happens when we're highly profitable as a result of that when we have thousands of people working here, making that happen across all the things we were showing you, yeah, then maybe we'll go elsewhere. But right now we're sticking to India. Does inflation affect Q? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think, uh, I, I guess I would say it, it affects us a little bit in terms of our share price. Uh, uh, you know, I don't think inflation is helping the, mark, the, the, the capital markets right now. It doesn't really affect us on a day-to-day -day basis other than for the people who drive their cars to work. Gasoline here is how much now? Over 100 rupees a liter. Over 100 rupees a liter. A rupee, 70, it's about 70 rupees to a do dollar, U.S. dollar. So you can do the math on that. So you're talking, you know, over five bucks a gallon for gas, even here in India. So yeah, it affects the lives of the people here, but not too much in terms of what we're doing. Uh, current retention turnover of the staff, very, very small. Most people uh, that have come here are remain here. So, um, you know, we have all of our own battles and and internal uh, things that we're always battling with like any company, but uh, it's part of the, the, the open debate that goes on that helps build any business. And we encourage that uh, uh, overall as a business. NASDAQ, um, a lot of what would happen with NASDAQ will be affected by what happens with our own share price and with uh, the public markets in general. It's certainly something that we believe will happen for us in the future. Um, you know, most of the companies that uh, some of you are probably shareholders of that came out of the Canadian capital markets that went on to NASDAQ in the spring, in the hot market of last year, spring, early summer of 2021, are now trading at a fraction of what their share price was uh, when they went on to the NASDAQ market. We don't want to make that mistake. So when we feel that we have continued and will continue to build the financial foundation of our business. Uh, as the markets begin to return to a glimmer of, uh, uh, of more uplift than they currently have today, uh, rest assured you'll see us making a move. Where do I think the stock price should be right now? It's a great question. Um, without revealing again any guidance of where we are, let's just imagine, you know, for a moment that uh, 
we should be trading in any kind of reasonably healthy market minimally at five to six times revenue currently. And I would make an argument that we should be at eight to 10 times. But let's be conservative and just talk about five times. Five times uh, uh, last year would be roughly about where we are today in terms of our price, but we're getting no credit for where we're headed. If we're going to double or even possibly be on our way to two and a half or three times where our revenue is, you guys can all do the math. You can see that we're massively undervalued as a company. So we think that we come out with further guidance for the year and people see the acceleration of what's going to happen over the course of 2022 in both of our revenues and the depth of breadth of our products. Uh, we think we should truly be trading at five, six, maybe as much as 10 times revenue, that should put us at a share price that should be two, three, four times what we are today. So that's kind of a roundabout answer to your question. I think our share price right now fairly should be at least 40 to 50 cents. Plans to raise awareness of, of the queue on the American side. Um, uh, it's mainly a ground game. Uh, we're doing a lot more calls with American investors right now. We have not secured any specific IR firm for support in the U.S. market. We kind of were planning that or are planning that around an uplist. Uh, we have banks right now that would take us public, you know, NASDAQ, you know, tomorrow. Uh, we have, you know, banks calling us regularly because there's, uh, there's a story that people see that they know will resonate with investors in the US. We don't think the markets are healthy enough to do that, but we're taking all the, the action necessary to ensure that when the time is right, that we can do that. And leading into that effort is when you'll see us make a much more aggressive move uh, in terms of the capital market promotion in the, in the US side. Someone asked how many employees, I said, we have about 150 now across the company, about 75 in this office that you're looking at right now, 50 in the Chatterbox, which works primarily virtually, Chatterbox influencer marketing business, and another 25 or so in the US. Is everybody worn out? What time is it? Okay. All right. Yeah, it's a question about bark ratings. Our average bark rating over the last six months was about 35 GRP. Our average bark rating over the last five weeks has been about 41 and a half. There's a lot of things that are going on right now in the bark landscape. Our primary mission is to make sure that we're maximizing the revenue of every GRP we get. Simran and her team and a couple of the people that you, you met, Ashish and Pankaj, these people are, are you know, world-class. These are world-class people. Uh, you know, when we go into Dentsu or Havas or Group M, we're meeting with the CEOs of these companies. And when we walk in the door, it's not like they're seeing somebody that they're meeting for the first time. It's like they're seeing a relative or old friend. So these relationships are extreme, extremely strong that we have in the company right now, and we fully expect to leverage them on a go-forward basis. GRP is something we follow every minute, every day, but our real focus on that is to maximize what each GRP represents and also to bring against those some of these 360 degree campaigns that we've been talking about. Any hints or breadcrumbs on things in the work? Well, I think we're certainly uh, interested in, in what's happening in mobile. Uh, uh, so so we're, we're taking a look at that. We're again, interested in what's happening in technology. So we're looking at that. And we're very, very interested in other areas that we can create products, app-based products or other things that can serve the young audiences that we reach. What we talk about a lot that I haven't mentioned tonight is what we call our loudspeaker. Currently our loudspeaker, which is our channels, reaches about 125 million people a week across the board with the additions of Samsung, et cetera. Our goal is that by the end of this year, we're gonna reach across all of the products and services and places where Q product is close to 200 million people every week. That's a loud, that's a, that's a loud loudspeaker. That's a big foghorn that we can blow out across India. So the real thing that we're, that we're trying to do is to build some products and services that we own, that we have, that are part of what we, we get the revenue from, 
that we can launch and leverage our loudspeaker. So stay tuned for those. There are some things I was working the last two days in the conference room right over here to my left with a couple of those projects, but I'm gonna to have to leave you in suspense. I can't tell you, sorry, I can't tell you or have to kill you. Can't tell you what, uh, what that is. So listen, I'm gonna wrap this up. Thank you all of the investors, all the people that have come onto this call. We really appreciate it. We've recorded this. So if you wanna watch things back again, you, we'll, uh, Jace will get this up onto the website here in the next 24 hours or so. Um, did we hit record? Okay, good. Thank God for that. Um, and once again, please, you know, join me in giving a hand to all of these people that are out here that are, you know, work, working, working, their, working their tails off to support the growth of our business and return shareholder value to all of you. Because believe me, that's what we're all about. That's what we all want to do. And we're doing everything we can to make it happen. So thanks, everyone. And uh, see you at the next one. Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste.